Hello everyone. The Doctor and Discography review is not going to be my next video. It is in fact going to be this five-way ranking. Oh man, I lost my mind trying to do this video. Between Andorsium, Artspire, Blood Incantation, Gore Guts, and the legendary but very short-lived Necrophagist. I'm just going to spoil right now, these three are all really high. But apart from that, I'm not going to spoil much at all. Now, since Blood Incantation only have two full lengths, I'm going to include their demo. And of course, the very controversial um, friggin' Time Wave Zero. At Nauseam have two arms, Gorguts have five, but I'm also going to throw in Palladies Dust. Which is, of course, their singular track EP. It's amazing. Necrophagus, of course, have two full lengths. At Nauseam have two full lengths, and Artspire have four. Which brings our total to 18. So. There's one album which stands out from the rest for being very different. So uh, one of these bands went ambient last year. You guys know exactly where this is going. And it had no other place to go than last. Time Wave Zero was very disappointing. I like me some ambient music from time to time. If I just want to study, but if it's very late at night, and, I st and I'm still in a music mood but I just want to relax, I might actually reach for this album. But, uh... Apart from that, this is just not quite it. For a band as versatile and varied as Blood Incantation, you would think that these songs would ebb and flow in a very interesting way. <clears throat> You'd think there'd be a lot of key changes and slight tempo changes and blah blah blah, because that's what Blood Incantation do best. They just want to jar your senses and shift around all the time. But this is just not that. It's very repetitive of the same kind of stuff over and over for like three or four minutes and then it's the next track. And they just keep on doing that until the album is done pretty much. What doesn't help is that you're supposed to listen to... Because this, this album, uh, this EP, is technically only two songs which both run for about 21 minutes, I think. And on Spotify and... YouTube or whatever have you, and split up into four movements each track. But yeah, the band wants you to listen to both sides of the EP in one go, which means you're listening to these two very long and repetitive ambient tracks. And ambient is supposed to be repetitive, but like, it's just. It's not done that well here. Mad respect for recording this with completely old gear from way back in the day and recording this straight to analog tape, which, funnily enough, they do for all of their stuff. How? How? Also, these guys are on tour with Immolation and Obituary right now. <laughs> All the way around America. God, that'd be awesome. So, Time Wave Zero, is there anything here that I'm not too crazy about? Because from Lucid Collective onwards, these are all very enjoyable albums. Uh, so this was asked by his second album, I think. We'll get to the first one in a sec. But, yeah, it's got the common issue of dodgy production since it's only their second down. It's just got no bass to it all. Bass to it at all. And much like I said for um, Vertebrae by Enslaved earlier, the guitars are just very lacking in terms of tone. They're just... <laughs> they're just not distorted enough to punch through correctly. And not bassy enough. Though... They did actually turn the bass player up really loud on here, but the way that his toad is dialed in is that it's like really clicky and high end ish. So there's like no meat from the guitars to like really push up that sound. But yeah, just by doing what they do best, hilariously shreddy death metal. And it's often kind of catchy, <laughs> which is really strange for a band in this list because none of these bands are catchy at all, in my opinion, but. Archway definitely are a little bit. As always, the musicianship is just absolutely inhuman. But uh, you can tell that they quantized and time stretched it. They don't need it. If you watch videos of these guys live, they are on point constantly. So the studio to hear it'll be timelined and stuff, it's just oof. It's rising off the wall. Next one is All Shallow Line by Archway. Pretty much the same thing. Like it's just Archway doing what they do best. This was their debut, which weirdly has better production than that second one despite them recording this for themselves 
for the most part, I think. I could be wrong on that, but the point is it's a solid start for a pretty damn good band. Hey. I hate to do this for my boys in Blood Incantation, but half their discography is coming this low. From here on out, these are like just bangers after bangers. And first things first is Blood Incantation's demo. It's no wonder they got signed off the strings of this demo, because it may be only four tracks and, like, what, 17 minutes long. But this album already has the Blood Incantation sound. It's got their weird mesh of death metal and ambient and progressive rock and metal. And all the janky tempo and time signature changes. The absolutely ridiculous drumming from Isaac. I'm trying to scoop up my cat, just like on the Enslaved video. And this might be my favorite demo I ever made. <clears throat> like I said, it's four tracks, 16 minutes, no time is wasted. And it's no wonder they got signed. Next up is... <laughs> one of the weirder ones, and my least favorite release by Gorguts, but still an absolute banger, Palladies Dust. This is a singular 33 minute track. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a very challenging listen just like some we'll get to later we'll get to later and it's just Gorgut's doing what they do best super unconventional and creative avant-garde and dissonant technical death metal and as you would hope from a track of this length it is really varied has lots of faster parts slower parts mid-tempo parts and it has their weird vocals that they've been doing ever since Obscura, where they get their secondary guitarist to just do like this really inhumane sounding yell. We'll get to Obscura much, much, much later, by the way. If you guys know me well, about my opinion on Gold Guts, you probably know exactly where it's going to be. But uh, number one might be kind of obvious, because I totally don't talk about it all the goddamn time. Anyways, Plenty Stars. It's really good. It's really, really good. If this was a ranking between most other bands, it would be a bit higher. But these bands are just <laughs> that quality. That an EP as good as Paul Ladies does is this low. Okay, next up, Relentless Mutation by Archspire. This almost has that same level of chaos as Bleed the Future, which is a bit higher. And, oh god, the production is getting better and better, the, <laughs> the songwriting and arrangements are getting more and more impressive. Archmire always have this, like, neoclassical kind of underbite to them, which I'll get to specifically for Bleed the Future. And they're just getting, Archmire just get better and better for each album for the most part. Uh... Well, I did have their second one below the first, so I'm going like, what, two, one, three, four? You know they believe the feature is higher than this, they only have four rounds and I've already set three of them. So that's no spoiler. But yeah, it's just Art Spy is slowly getting better and better at what they do. I can't wait for what they do for album five, and I'm going to be seeing them in October. That's going to be awesome. Okay, you want more Gorguts? Consider dead. I think that all five Gorguts albums are bangers. So me trying to order them is just like... How? <laughs> um, but yeah, it's considered dead. I believe it came out in 1991. Which was just... Filled to the brim with absolute classics. You had Immolation putting out their debut. Autopsy putting out Mental Funeral. Death put out Human. A lot of game changes. A lot of absolute classics. I'm pretty sure Immolation put out a debut as well. I just said that, didn't I? But yeah, 1991 absolutely stacked to the brim with classics coming out of the death metal scene. Oh, FG The Forgotten came out in 91 as well. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Consider Dead, it right off the bat has their has Gorgut's signature weird sound that no one else except for them does. And it just has this really weird and unique sound to it the production is really bassy and reverb heady have heady well 
heavy and it suits their gross and unconventional sound. And it's a banger. I don't know what else to say. Okay, next up is From Wizard of the Hate. I wasn't that big on this album at first. This was like the second or third Gorgots album I tried. Probably the fourth one I tried, actually. And I remember listening to it thinking, oh, it's a poor man's obscure art. Inverted is the best track and the rest are not that good. Blah, 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 blah. After two or three more listens, it's a banger. No surprise. It's Gorgots. That's all they do. Guys, please write a new album. It's been nearly 11 years. Anyways, <laughs> from Wizard of the Head, it's definitely a poor man's obscure. I still stand by that statement to this day. But, uh, you, you can't recapture the magic of Obscura. Other bands have tried to do it. Some come damn close. <coughs> Looking at you, Ed Nauseam. But they just don't quite have that same sound, the same vocal style, the same riffing or drumming style. And much like Obscura, this is a dizzying and hellish display of <laughs> dissonant and avant garde black uh, death metal. And it's from Wizard of the Hebe Gorguts, bro. Come on. Okay, next up is Bleed the Future by Archspire. I definitely think it's their best release. It also helps that I started with this one, so I've listened to it multiple times over. Drone Corps Aviator is definitely my favorite song by them. The title track is also awesome with that giant classical ish sounding bit in the middle. Golden Mouth of Road is another really good one, which has a lot of deathcore influence, I noticed. Like, it's a very deathcore y song. Like, you could. If you dive down the technicality a bit, you could almost put that on the Lord of Shore around. I'm not trying to compare those two bands, by the way, because Archspire is leagues better than they could ever dream. But, like, <laughs> wow, that was scathing. And once again, the production is getting even cleaner. It was their biggest album yet. And they did a huge tour for it, which they're still trying to finish to this day because of quarantine. Hence, them coming down to Australia later in the year. And it's a banger. It's like 31 minutes long and only seven tracks. So it's also a very easy listen to just pop on and go all the way through. I remember the last time I listened to it, I was at track five and I was like, Jesus, track five already? We only got like eight minutes left of this. <laughs> Okay, next up is Ad Nauseam. Definitely the most dense and rhythmically weird band of all of these people. They just have this whole new level of depravity that even gives Gorgas a run for their money. Uh, for both of Ad Nauseam's albums, I just can't believe how unique they are. Like, obviously they take notes from Gorguts and Immolation, Immolation, wow, Immolation and bands of that nature. And they just, they something completely different to it. <laughs> I literally don't even know how to describe these guys. They're just in a league of their own. And I really hope that their follow-up to Imperative and Perceptible Impulse is just as good as this. Because if it is, wow. We'll be getting to that one a lot later, by the way. Okay, next up is Onset of Putrefaction by Necrophanist. A great start to this band. I pretty much, at this point, it was pretty much a one-man project. And the, the drums were programmed on the original. The bass, guitars, and vocals was, of course, all handed by Christian, is it? I don't remember. But yeah, this has a lot of Tech Death classics. And much like Ad Nauseam, Necrophanist had their own unique sound. It was so tight and rhythmically tight. Time signatures, the different temperature changes are just all over the place. But it all works flawlessly. And this one's got some Tech Death classics on it. Like, it's got Foul Body Autopsy. It's obviously got Fermented Awful Discharge, which is one of those famous songs in all of Tech Death. And... Much like a couple of these I've already brought up, their production is a little bit weird. But then again, it's because it was pretty much a one-man project, and it was recorded by the guitar player. They did, of course, do a re-recording with a nicer guitar tone and real drums and better bass and vocals. And yeah, the re-recording is definitely a giant step up. 
But uh, yeah, it's a Tech Death classic. And I know a lot of people who don't really like Tech Death, but they still like Necrophagist. You know who you are. Or for all the people in the Quest Metal Discord who are going to be watching this. Okay, next up is... I can't even see what's next. Ooh, the Erosion of Sanity. This is a big step up from Consider Dead in terms of production and songwriting. The vocals are getting better. The drumming is off the charts, just like it is for every Gold Guts album. I can't believe what I'm listening to when I listen to Gold Guts Prayer. It almost has that obscure level of what is going on and it's in a much shorter package because with the exception of Gorgot's newest two full lengths all their albums are like 35 minutes long which is good because for their kind of style you can't really go for that long I love Colored Sands and Obscure to Death but those are both way too long trim like 15 minutes off both and then we good but yeah Resident of Sanity it's a big step up from Colored Sands I don't Colored Sands <laughs> considered dead we'll get to cold sands in a sec it's a big step up from i always just did it again some of it it's a big step up from considered dead and it's a b -b 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 banger okay next up is one that grew on me a lot over time star spawn by blood incantation the opening 13 minute track of vitrification of blood part one is amazing and seeing it live last year absolutely tore me in half it was so good the title track is brilliant chaos chaoplasm is brilliant and this almost has that hidden history of the human race level of just weird and creative we'll get to that one later we'll get to that one later the instrumental is not a good track they kind of meant it as an interlude but the album is only 35 minutes long so why is there an interlude you could have just gone straight to the title track but then again the album would have only been like 31 minutes long anyways that's not a good track but the other four are all amazing and i'm still annoyed they did not play the title track when i saw them yeah okay next up is colored sands gorgots came back with a bang back in 2013 I was only 10 years old when this album came out, but I would have loved to have seen how people responded to this. Because a lot of people think that this is the best Gold Guts album, and you know what? Fair enough, it's awesome. Every single song is very lengthy, like 6, 7, 8, 9 minutes. Much like I said a couple of minutes ago, I think it's way too long, but that's besides the point. The production is a bit weird, it's really bass heavy, and not that trebly, so the bass and guitars kind of do blend into each other. But as normal for Gorgods, it just has this sound and confidence to it. This certain way of structuring and writing songs that no other band has. Which is why I'm waiting for, for Gorgods to make another album, because it's probably going to be another absolute game changer, because that's pretty much all they do. But yeah, it's Cold Sands. It's an absolute banger, which I almost toyed with going higher. But these final four are all just like straight up masterpieces dude and number one is like that close to scratching my top 10 of all time it's very damn close okay coming at number four is epitaph by necrophagist i remember about two months ago i was like you know what i need to prepare bleh, prepare for this ranking i listen to epitaph by necrophagist again i might just skim it for the tracks i'm not that familiar with but no, as soon as I went halfway through Stab Wound, the opening track, I'm hands down one of the best death metal songs ever made. I was like, screw it, I'm going to listen to the whole thing. One go, no pauses, or anything. It helps that I was on a bus ride. That's besides the point. I listened to this album for like my fifth, sixth, or seventh time. <laughs> All in one go. This album is just a 33 minutes and 8 tracks. Of some of the best tech death that has ever been made. It's just <laughs> banger after banger. The musicianship is so tight that they just sound like computers. <laughs> I don't know how <laughs> I don't know how bands do this. 
I'll, I'll talk about that when I get to the next album too, that they just sound like computers and it's that tight. It has a classical underbite. There's lots of prog metal influence. The, the time signatures and all the different riff jumping is just... It makes no sense, but it makes a lot of sense at the exact same time. The stillborn one is a banger. Uh, Diminished B is a banger. Um, there's one other track which I'm blanking on the name of that I love too. I don't remember. It does have a couple of tracks towards the end, which I'm not that huge on. Once again, I'll put those there. But uh, overall, this is just an absolute game changer for tech deaths. Once again, I would have loved to have been there back when this came out. I was like one... I was probably one when this album came out. Because it came out in, what, 04? Yeah. But I would have loved to have been there when this came out. But, for an album I was actually there when it came out for... I was actually there for when it came out. Wow. Pair of Imperceptible Impulse by Ad Nauseam. This, much like the rest of the top four, I just can't get enough of. It has this urgency and straight up depravity to it which i just can't get enough of i listened to this album for like my ninth time last week and i'm still picking up on little intricacies in here first of all it's only five tracks and all of them are eight minutes or longer and even though i said that colored sands and obscure are too long for their own good this album is pretty much just as long as obscure and i think it gets away with using its I think it gets away with justifying it's a very long runtime of like what 57 minutes all five of these tracks go through so many different movements there's there's barely any choruses there's a couple of breakdowns i guess but like most of these bands have a very clear structure between like you know intro verse pre-chorus bridge interlude breakdown blah 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 these guys these guys just go from one weird movement to the next and it's all so fluid. The, the use of tempo and time signature changes constantly is just unbelievable. They recorded this album straight to analog tape live in the studio. They built their own basses and guitars. They built their own amps. They came up with a brand new tuning. They produced, mixed, and mastered it all by themselves. And I can't believe an album like this exists. You know what I mean? Each time I listen to it, I'm like, how do you even begin to write something like this? This album took like five or six years to make, <laughs> and you can tell why. Speaking of the production, it's just so clean and clear. The, the variation in volume between all the instruments between each track, because it does vary a bit. Like there are some tracks where the bass is really loud and overpowering on purpose. I'm not saying that as a negative. And tracks where the bass kind of takes a backseat. There are songs where the drums are really loud. There are songs where the vocals are very quiet. Just let the instruments do their thing. By the way, one of the guitarists is their vocalist. Just how? Stop. <laughs> it's unfair. And... I'm at a loss for words every damn time I listen to the sound. I just finish it and go... My brain is mush. But I loved it. <laughs> Number two was number one for a while but uh no obscure by gorguts i've talked about this album at length many times it's a game changer and a lot of death metal bands of the weird side still use this album for influence to this day <clears throat> much like imperative and perceptible impulse and epitaph it has this certain the vibe to it, which no one with the band could recreate. It's so varied, and it has faster tracks, slow tracks, tracks which are mostly instrumental. It even has some songs as like violins and weird reverberated non traditional reverberated non traditional instruments. <sighs> like I said, it's too long, and it does have a couple of tracks which I flat out don't like. But the overall package is just that good. This is hands down a top 15 album of all time for me. And much like these two, I listen to it and think, 
how do you even begin to make this? Because this is yet another one where I would have loved to have been there when it came out. Because could you imagine the year is 1998 and you hear this? I simply can't. But of course, coming in at number one, which is like my 11th or 12th favorite album ever. It's a 10 out of 10. I adore pretty much every single fleeting second of this album. Hidden History of the Human Race by Blood Incantation. <laughs> I could just end the video right here. But here we go. This album was four tracks. Because the last one is super long. Slave Species of the Gods, perfect song. The Geezer Power Plant, quite possibly my favorite death metal song ever. In a Pass to Outer Space. A droney, repetitive instrumental, which has a very clear build. And when it blasts into death metal, it's an absolute shock to the system in the best way possible. And, to top it all off, the 18 minute awakening from the dream of existence to the multidimensional nature of our reality, brackets, mirror of the soul. You know I'm a fanboy if I memorize the title that long. Everything I said about legitimately every album here is in a very tight 36 minute package. Ambient, death metal, progressive rock, um, crowd rock, ambient, progressive metal tech death, you name it. It's probably in here. Every single track has just the correct tempo changes. The time things for changes are on point. The, the sliding of different tempos and influences is all done to perfection here. Every single part is right where it needs to be. Nothing is too short or too long. And it wraps up in a crisp 36 minute package. And that artwork... This is one of those very, very, very rare albums where I think legit everything about it is perfect. And when deciding what number one would be for this list, it was a no-brainer. <sighs> that was a long video. I've been talking for 27 minutes. And I loved it. That's pretty much the TLDR for Hidden History of the Human Race. And hearing two of these tracks live. Oh my god. I couldn't believe it. I heard Geezer Power Plant and Awakening blah 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 live and both of them were just unbelievably good. I'm normally a musher, somebody you know stares their head back and lot. no. For these for this band I was just intently watching. I might even import some photos or videos now. But uh, yeah, if you're up for it, rank these albums. Or maybe rank the five bands individually. Or of course, just give me like your top six, or five, or ten. Or of course, do the full ranking. And with all that being said, I'll see you in the next one.